That's, we'll work on it. Um, well, is uh, we are officially on the air. Is um, is I'll call the roll. Is everybody's here except for Mark? Um, is uh, Patty is not joining us this evening? Is uh, the town manager will explain that in a minute? Is uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everybody. Um, is uh, before we get going too far, I'm going to ask uh, the town manager just to give a general update on what's going on with the town hall and the COVID-19, please, Steve. Okay. Um, on Thursday, um, one of our police officers who hadn't been feeling well on Wednesday. Um, went and got tested because he had the symptoms of COVID-19. He tested positive along with two members of his family. We were notified, uh, once he found out on Thursday, we were notified and kind of backtracked to see if he had been in the building um, or not. He had been in the building on Tuesday morning and he was feeling fine. Like everybody else, he was wearing a mask, um, but he, uh, handed the payroll to uh, the town clerk and, and left. Um, we don't think he was in there long enough to expose anybody, plus he was wearing a mask, but be on the safe side. Um, Patty, myself, Lisa Hustis, and Lisa Vargas were in meetings, even though we were six feet apart, we were still speaking and talking with each other. Um, so, um, Initially, everybody got a little nervous about this, but we just, I decided it was more prudent and safe for the citizens and, and staffing to close it down. Now, Pat, uh, Patty has uh, gone to be tested. It was a week uh, today, uh, and she should know by tomorrow um, if she tests positive or negative. Uh, so once we know that she's negative, um, we'll open the town office back on track. But that's where the police department uh, had all their testing done. And police, as most people know, <laughs> whoops, stepped on the dog. <laughs> um, don't Peter bite me. Yeah, <laughs> lucky she didn't bite me. Um, they don't um, ride around in cars. He was in the car with another officer today, uh, that day. Uh, he has been uh, put into his house for 14 days at the advice of his doctor. So uh, he hasn't shown any symptoms, but he wants to be on the safe side. Uh, so, um, so far, nobody in the town office has expressed uh, that they're feeling ill in any way. Uh, it might be a little early, but um, I think I'm fairly comfortable with the fact that probably we, nobody got exposed, but at least I'm hoping. So that's where we are. As soon as we know, uh, they went in on Friday. The uh, EM, uh, York County EMA has a special group that goes in and disinfects. They did uh, Thursday, they went into the police station and disinfected uh, and also all the police cars um, and what officers he could, uh, chief could find. Poor chief, he was coming back from a vacation at, heading south and that's what he got a phone call for that. Uh, then the following Friday, that Friday, they came into the town office. Nobody was there except for um, town clerk. And we had a contractor in there putting in our fire alarm system. Um, and they wear masks constantly. So um, we're pretty confident that everybody should be safe, but we want to make sure. So that's where we are with the COVID-19. We hope to be back on track on Monday. Thank you. Any questions of, Keith, of Steve? Yeah, Steve, uh, has there been, been any good dissemination of information to the public? Because obviously you were open on Tuesday for customer service. A lot of people may have been in there or may not have been in there. And I'm not sure how we were tracking that down. 
Yes, I, we put it out on our Facebook page. We put it out on BCTV. We had it on our door. I got a, a number of phone calls from citizens who had been in. Uh, some had been in on Monday or in different days, but <clears throat> um, they were just at the counter, most of them. There was one uh, citizen who actually saw Patty that day um, to get something notarized early in the morning. I think it was before Jerry came down. But uh, they've all been notified, uh, the people that we know of, and we're being right up front with them and telling them the same thing I just told you when it happened uh, and the outcome and where we are. So um, people have been, I have to say, pretty understanding and, and, and uh, getting back and forth with either text messages or emails so, and phone calls. Hey, Steve, are, are we requiring any uh, patron that comes in to wear a mask? We're service? requiring everybody to wear a mask when they okay. come in. Unless All they right. have a breathing, uh, like COPD or an issue like that, uh, then we, it's hard to require that. Sure. Uh, we've only really had uh, one citizen who gave us a lot of crap. Um, but... Uh, he uh, got his paperwork taken care of. Patty took it from him. He was in line and gave it back to him, all completed. So, they, again, the staff has been great dealing with people, and, this, and the public's been great trying to uh, work with us on this. And, and they're very patient. So, but everybody's wearing masks. You enter the lobby, you're wearing a mask. And uh, Patty's right on top of it. She doesn't, has, doesn't hesitate to meet them as they're coming down the ramp or um, to tell them you need to get a mask. And we have masks for them, so they've been real good. Most people have their own. Great. Thank you, Steve. Yep. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> bring us to a, approval of our uh, June 9th minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second. A motion and a second. If there's no discussion, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. <laughs> is uh, Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. It's four zero. Thank you. Um, public comment is we have nothing sent to us on any public comment. So as we'll we had a public, public hearing. Is we have the public hearing, okay. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is uh is a public hearing on the July fourteenth, two thousand and twenty town meeting election. Um, is I have not heard of anybody you know wishing to participate. We haven't had any people emailing or sending anything in that I know of. Nope. Yeah. I've had several people call me asking questions about the budget, upcoming budget, and um. They're just curious at the numbers, and, and some of them are more curious about how we our attitude, how our police attitude is with all this stuff going on. And I, I know the police have taken out a statement that say that they don't agree with the you know what's been going on with uh, the violent police action, and they uh, do not use those tactics. And I've and made sure people understand that we have a great police department. They're very user friendly, and um, and I've never seen one complaint. So we're very, and same with the fire. They've been pretty awesome. So, so the, I, that's all I've had. The, uh, the public caring is, um, is I, I meant to ask Patty before, but is, do I have to read down through all that, Steve? No, you don't. You've already done it several right, times. We've already done it. We've already okayed it. No having yeah, names on every public. Anybody had any questions, they could uh, have brought them forward. Um, the, the budget numbers are up this year from the uh, school district um, by about 250,000 roughly and ours is up uh, more than that so uh, we're hoping that um, we see a positive revenue uh, coming in for the end of the year which is June 30th looks like we're going to be on budget for most everything um, we'll have to make some transfers but uh, and it's hard to predict what the revenue sharing is going to be this year, but people have been buying a lot of new cars. We hope that trend continues. 
because there's so many good deals out there. So, um, but uh, revenue sharing was down last month, and uh, we haven't seen I haven't seen the numbers for June, but I suspect they're going to be down. So we uh, we'll see. Hey, Tom, my wife just popped in and said she can't she can't see anybody on the TV. Can't see so, anybody on the TV. Yeah, so I don't know if we're streaming or just recording. All right. Is, uh, hang on a minute, and I'll check with the control room. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Is uh, they're working on it right now? Is um, one of the problems we're having with the control room right now is that um, they're also running the school budget hearing. And uh, Terry is trying to control both these meetings at the same time with uh, one helper. So she's uh, scrambling to get things going. So I, I'm not sure you know, how soon they'll get it going, but is uh, we can continue on with our meeting. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna close the public hearing then. Is I, I, I'll, I'll say that I have not had too many comments other than the usual is uh, nobody likes the taxes going up, but they all want the services. So when I ask them you know, what they wanna cut, is everybody you know has their own pet peeve about what they wanna cut, but overall the people are generally satisfied with what's going on. Um, moving down our agenda, we have no reports of committees. We have no appointments or unfinished business. Is uh, brings us to the town manager's report. Yep. Um, besides the COVID-19, uh, we've been back and forth with Great Falls Construction on the credit enhancement agreement. We're meeting in Portland next uh, Monday in the legal office. Our attorney has been talking to their lawyer and how we want to structure it. Um, I haven't seen this, the uh, sample yet of our template, but it's, uh, I'm looking forward to sitting down and, and finding out what we can work, what we can help them and, they, and we can help our growth and, and infrastructure with that. Um, Chief Plant and Chief Town, uh, just from the COVID-19, have been absolutely excellent in, in uh, staying on top of this and making sure everything's going well. So um, uh, and that's just about it. Public Works is putting in culverts, and uh, I've, been, I've got several uh, citizens who they've replaced their uh, driveway culverts, and uh, we're very pleased at how they, they did the job, which is always nice to hear positive stuff. And I get the same thing on what's going on down in the town office. It's, it's nice to hear. We have a good group of people, and they're very conscientious about uh, customer service. Um, we'll be opening... Uh, our hours are changing, but that's on the further down. Um, uh, we're trying to lock in some more permanent hours now. We're hopefully moving forward with the COVID-19 in the background, but um, that's all we have really. There's not enough going on, but. Uh, okay. is, is you, you want to quick give a quick update on the fire department and police department? Yeah. The, uh, we had a meeting today with the, uh, which is our regular Tuesday meeting on the fire and police uh, uh, building project. Uh, they're moving right along. It, the, the office area has all been sheetrocked and mudded, and the painters are coming in to paint on Thursday. And they said it will take them about two days, so all that will be done. Um, I, I was in there last week, and they were still running some of the uh, IT cable and stuff, but they must have finished it by now if they're coming in to paint. Um, they're still working on the mezzanine uh, in the apparatus bay. Um, they have to still uh, finish up sheetrocking and, and mudding that, and that will get taken care of. The brickwork on the outside is, is coming to uh, almost completed. The, uh, the front is looks like it's almost done, and they were working around the tower at the end of the week. So uh, the outside and uh, Reno, who's our excavator for the, this job, um, has been working on the uh, driveway entrance from Logan and he's got that all uh, uh, dug out and filled in and, and leveled and 
Uh, he's going to next week. He's moving over to the access road to do that. Um, they're expecting Libby Scott to come in and pave uh, second week of July. So that we'll really see some differences. And then the landscaping will be right behind that. So um, we're making progress. It's, September looks like a date we'll be in. And if I'm, I think if they're going at the rate they're going, we'll be in maybe the first week of September. They're, they're moving right along and doing a great job. It's a beautiful building, both of them. The police, uh, they they hear today that they actually poured the base, the first concrete part of the floor in the, in the Sally port. Uh, but uh, they're getting all that squared away and electronics and um, so that will be right behind it. So they all should be completed about the same time. But it's going to be a beautiful facility, very functional, which is exciting. Um, that's yeah, it. It is, uh, Terry and I went through there last week, last Wednesday, I think it was. We went in and uh, did a videotaping of the whole facility. Um, she's in the process of editing that, and hopefully in the next couple of days we'll get that up on the on air so that people can see the progress that's going on. And, and I just want to say, like the town manager said, is, uh, the, the change over the last couple of weeks has been amazing on the interior. So um, is, uh, if you guys want to take a tour of it, just let us know. We can arrange that and uh, we can uh, be glad to show it off. And um, one other related item is around July 8th. They hope that will be the day, but they're going to move the bell from the existing fire station over to the new station and install it in the tower. So that's kind of a big deal. So uh, we'll keep people posted on that also. Um, I, mean, I actually I actually saw the walkthrough today. So she's got it up posted. Oh, she's got it up already. <laughs> okay. I guess she didn't need my help with the voiceover. <laughs> so um, any questions of the town manager? All right. Is uh, I have nothing new in communications. Is um, I do have the account payable. Is uh, I uh, Patty did not get those out to the rest of you. I'll go through it and we can. Uh, I'll put a uh, temporary motion to uh, okay it. Well, we have a payroll warrant. 2051 from June 18th, 2020, for the amount of $47,964.51. We have an account payable warrant, 2052 from June 25th, for June 25th, 2020, for the amount of $283,271.03. And we have a payroll warrant, 2052 for June 25th, 2020, for the amount of $58,629.14. Um, <clears throat> so is that it? I'll make a motion that we pay our bills after the rest of the board has had a chance to uh, review them. I'll second. Any discussion? I will call the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. Thank you. Tom, one question. Are those going to be available out? Um, is, is, uh, we'll, I'll get in touch with Patty. If, if your test comes in, Negative is I'm sure she can be into the office to uh, email them, you know, send them digitally as we have before. Um, if not, I'll, I'll, we can talk to Lisa Vargas and uh, get those out to everybody. So, Thank you. No problem. Um, under new business is bridge design. Yeah. Um, we've been getting reports ever since I've been here and probably before that about the Ridland Road uh, Bridge and the Diamond Hill Bridge. Uh, both of them have been downgraded for weight restrictions. Um, Ridland Road doesn't get as much traffic, especially in the wintertime because we don't plow it. Um, but Diamond Hill, that whole area seems to be growing. Um, the bridges, um, 
I get reports every uh, year. They're really recommending that we plan on replacing them. Um, so I, I reached out to uh, several contra uh, engineering groups. Uh, Calderwood, was actually somebody I've worked with before, uh, gave me, came out and actually looked at the bridges um, and proposed um, the cost, I think it was 22,000 uh, for each design. Um, my thought is these bridges uh, are available for uh, state funding. It's a 50-50 split. Um, if, of course, there's funding in the state budget to do that. Um, but if we have designs done and ready to go, and shovel ready, it, I think it would be to our advantage to have these designs put in place uh, and have them done. And you're talking just over 44,000. I think we can manage that out of our road budget this year and, um, and possibly next year, look at at least doing one of them. The Diamond Hill Bridge is the one that I worry the most because uh, it's got restrictions of 23,000 pounds, but um, we see logging trucks and gravel trucks, yeah. big, big trucks going over that. And I don't want to hear that they go swimming in the river. So um, in order to do that, I, I need your approval to kind of take it away from the road budgets, but we can do it, that. Are you, you going to take it away from the cemetery road project? No. <laughs> We're doing your road. <laughs> we'll see how we come in. I mean, we've, we've got a proposal from uh, Libby Scott that we agreed to, but um, we'll, we'll see how the road, they, they pay it as we go in. So um, each road is completed. They send us an invoice. So I may hold off on um, some of the ones we were looking at the uh, uh, Little River Road and uh, several others that we could possibly wait on. It can't get much worse. So. But I think it's important that we address these bridges. It's been a long time. So. Any questions of Steve? No, oh, I agree. It's been a... Well, for the last nine years, I know they've, yeah. they've discussed this issue. And I'm sure it's been before that as well. So I think, you know, better to be proactive on it and, and move forward to make sure we have the, the plans that we need so we can get what needs to be done done sooner rather than later when, when funds are available. Yeah. So I, I uh, not have the funds available next year, but at least we'll be ready. Well, yeah, we'll be prepared later on when it, when the time comes. So yep. yeah, I'm in agreement. Is Steve, in the email I saw before, um, is uh, you had talked about the uh, checking out with the University of Maine system. Yeah, there's a company called AIT that does these bridges. It's alternative uh, materials. Um, a lot of concrete, a lot of wood fiber type stuff. Um, it's got good I'm, track I'm very familiar with that. I'm very familiar with that. Is uh, is when I was in the, the legislature, the, the two terms I was in there, um, the committee I served on is uh, we were instrumental in uh, getting that up and running. And that's one of the things I was going to suggest is uh, they have been doing a lot of work on alternative ways to build small bridges. Um, and as you said, using less concrete, you know, but being structurally sound. So um, that may be a, a really uh, beneficial way to go know is to check with them some more yeah i've eric uh, calderwood was, got real excited when i mentioned that i've been talking to ait because they all know him and they uh and uh they ait thought that this would these would be perfect bridges to consider those on and i'm not, i'm hoping that we there'll be money saved instead of using steel like just yeah. rust over the years so I, i'm going to explore that uh, and yeah. see what we can do the, the 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 name of the person that was in charge of the whole program for the uh, alternative uh, building materials was Habib Daga, and, um, as I believe he's still there. So he still is there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, you'll probably remember me. So drop my name. <laughs> uh, I will. Right. Um, do we have a motion to allow the town manager to uh, transfer funds in the road department? Highway department as needed to the bridge design. So moved. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? 
They'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you. Um, the water connection to Summersworth, Steve. Oh, yes. Um, when you did the Summersworth Berwick Bridge, um, they, during that process, you previously had a water connection to the Summersworth Water District as backup. And I'm not sure what transpired during that big bridge yeah. project, but um, it was disconnected uh, when they were doing the bridge and it never got reconnected. And um, I've been in conversations off and on with Mr. Belmore, the city manager from Summersworth and his public works uh, director, um, Mike Boginski. And we've talked about it and they weren't sure they wanted to do it because uh, they don't want to foot the bill. And I don't think they should. It's, it's the benefits to us, you know. Um, but anyway, we had um, the engineering firm, Ty Bond, who does all the work for our water department, uh, give me a price for $19,000. Um, we have the funding in the budget currently, and I'm making sure we carry it forward when we go into the new budget um, if we decide to do that. Um, but she'll do, they'll do all the research and give us a cost associated with connecting. Um, I'm not sure we're going to go over the bridge. Uh, Mike and I have talked about that, and they think there might be a better alternative. Than, um, so she'll, she'll determine that. Um, but I, that is something um, I don't think you need to vote on because it's not a taxpayer uh, issue. It's something that the water department has budgeted for, and, I, and I'm going to move forward on it if you're okay with that. But you should be aware. Well, we, we, have, we have some history with that, that whole process. Is, uh, uh, yeah, I could see Ed kind of smiling in the background because uh, he remembers that process. And, you know, frankly, Steve, is my personal opinion, I wouldn't bother, is we have been dealing with this for years. We tried to do it back when we were doing the bridge. Summersworth did not want anything to do with us. Is we've approached them several different times other than that. And in the end, it always comes down to someone's worth turns us down. And, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, I, I have a feeling it's going to go the same way again. I really well, do. It's, yeah. It's, it's not to mention that they wanted to charge us an exorbitant amount of resources to supply us water when we were doing, redoing the water tower right. or stamp pipe, you know, and that was, and then the other issue is, is we went back and forth uh, during the, the whole bridge project and it just became a, a tit for tat and then I think eventually we're I, I believe we're still paying their light bill for the lights that are on their side if I remember correctly yes we are so but uh yeah it was not a was not a pleasant experience and it was just a battle back and forth so we decided not to pursue it at that point okay and unless things have changed I mean you well know. The, the issue is is it we're going to spend nineteen thousand dollars to have them engineer it and get an idea of cost for us so we can put it out to bid. Um, but that's only part of it. You have to have an interlocal agreement mm -hmm. between the two t town and the city. And um, we didn't have that last time. No. So no. I'm not sure how that would go. You know, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm against spending the money to design it. I really am because in the long run, I think it's going to be money wasted. Because is time and again is we see some of where you no know, talk about these things. We talked about it with the water. We talked about it with the gas. And in the end, is always something there that prevents us from doing it. I think that unless we can have something preemptive in writing that says that if we do the research and we decide to do it, that they you know they've already agreed to do it, then there's really no point. It's just going to be, you know taking a gamble for no real reason. Well, we need to find a second source of water. So that will just, uh, if you don't want to do this, and there's several other things. You had a study done uh, back in the mid 90s. Yeah. And it pointed out different areas. And they're all quite a distance from where we are. But it, if this is the case of what we'll do is we'll go back to that study, and we'll explore alternative resources. I would I would take that route first 
I, I know it may be more costly perhaps, but um, I think being dependent upon ourselves as opposed to another municipality would be a, more of an ideal situation. Yeah. yeah, most of what we would find would probably be another gr groundwater aquifer, um, which would make it easier to treat, I think. But, okay, that's fine. We can, I'll, let's, we'll take that direction then. It um, brings us to the, the library memorandum of understanding. Yes, we've been back and forth several drafts, maybe three or four anyway. Um, and the attorneys on our side had been excellent to work with. The last draft we sent them with some changes uh, and the library board, uh, people have been great to deal with making changes and knowing where we're coming from. So we uh, uh, aren't taking responsibility for the building itself for any capital projects, but we are gonna uh, pay the light bills. The staff will become town employees. Uh, they'll have some input into hours and, and policies that they would like just to keep their finger in it, which I think is good. Uh, you got a lot of people who put a lot of time and energy into that. Um, but the lawyer felt that this was what she was hoping that we would, uh, this is a good agreement and she thought we should um, bring it to you and um, have it approved. Is there, it, it appears we have the library board joining us. Is there anybody from the board that would care to speak? Are they on there? Is, no? I've, I've seen a bunch of people getting on. <laughs> four, four new, new people. Well, a couple Five. of them. One of them, one of them's in a spiral. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, Christine and Bob, Paula, Ralph. Oh, Kathy's there and Paula's there. Yeah, uh, Kathy, uh, Paula. Can you hear me, Kathy? I can. Yeah, good, good. Is um, is um, you know, is, is anybody from the library wish to speak on this? Well, we just came on, so we're really not sure where you are. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, we, we just we just started talking about the um, the memorandum of understanding with the library. We haven't really discussed anything other than that we've been sending this back and forth about five or six times, you no know, trying to get it straightened out. So, yep. And our lawyer thought it was a good a good under you know good MOU, and recommended that we act on it so any comments uh, I just uh, this is Paula and oh, I'm Paula. on I recognize you with the glasses <laughs> there you go yeah I just I'm gonna let uh, Ralph know because he wasn't on either well says, says he's here but he not connected is um... you have Ralph well, he, his, his uh, computer shows up, but he doesn't. <laughs> and Michael, Michael Strode is trying again as well. Yeah, yeah Michael uh, did quite a bit of the work on the language and stuff. He and sure that. did. So uh, he's to be commended, and, and lawyers were happy with the outcome. So it's a good number of tries. Um, uh, do the selectmen have any questions of the library? I don't think so. I read through it and I was pretty pretty impressed with the way things were laid out. Good document. Yeah, I, I don't have any further questions. It's pretty self-explanatory. I think it's a it's a, a fantastic agreement between the town and, and the library. So. I have no issues with it. I think it's great. I, I think the more that we can provide uh, through that means is it's a, well, it's a duty of our society to do that, to allow that service to the community and, and, and to the extent possible that we can maximize that, I think is ideal. Anything else from the uh, library side? Yes. Yeah, we're in. Do you have any comments, Paula? Uh, no, no, I'm I'm good. So, is um, 
Well, if nobody has anything, I, I would move that we accept the memorandum of understanding between the town of Berwick and the Berwick Library Association as it's presented to us this evening. Second. We have a motion and a second. Okay. Is there any uh, further discussion? Mm -hmm. oh, there's Ralph. Hey, Ralph. There's, um, um, if there's no further discussion, I'll go through the, the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. That's four to nothing. Is, uh, Welcome aboard. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully everything will work out and uh, we have a long, you no know, good relationship with the library in the town and uh, we can help both of the entities grow. Yeah. So Thank now you. the town has to approve that at the ballot, right? Right. Well, they have to approve their budget. Their budget, yeah. that's all. <laughs> they already recommended it, so. Right. It's a great resource for the town of Berwick. It's, it's a fantastic operation. So no, I don't think I don't think anybody's going to vote against the library. You know, no. No. well, it, there are people who vote against everything, so there will be some to vote against it. But I'm not worried about it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys you. tomorrow. Um, so next on the agenda is the uh, our changes at the town hall. Yeah, we um we've been off changing our hours back and forth, and we're trying to get back into somewhat normal hours so uh, uh the finance office and uh town clerk and myself sat down and looked at the different scenarios that patty had put out and their recommendation was to open at eight o'clock in the morning monday through wednesday um and then um monday would be eight to four in the afternoon tuesday would be eight to six uh so people would have a chance to get in there after work. Wednesday would be eight to four, Thursday, eight to four, and then Friday, eight to one thirty. But we, the uh, office would close on Friday at 1230. Um, so they get a chance to close out the books for the day. So I think those are good hours. It opens up a lot of, you know, being open a little bit later on Tuesday, it's nights that we usually are meeting. So we're there. Um, and it gives an opportunity for people to get in to, on their way home from work if they have business to take care of. So um, this is uh, this will be our new schedule starting as of uh, July 6th. It is. Any questions of Steve? No. It, it, um, and the change in the hours, Steve, that, that won't affect any of the union contract or anything? No, we just have to notify the union folks uh, two weeks in advance, and they already know that we were talking about this and there shouldn't be any issues with the union. It's a good schedule. They, 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 the customer service staff really looks forward to this schedule. So. All right. Um, and uh, we need to take a vote on that? Yeah, I would like you to vote on this. All right. Do we have a motion to accept the changes as presented? I moved. And a second? Second. A motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Four zero. Oops. All right. Tom? Yes? Before we leave the hours, uh, last meeting, Steve, you talked about closing the office on the 30th of June to close out the yearbook, yep. but I didn't didn't remember seeing any vote or anything. Did we need to take a vote on that? Or? No, you don't need to vote. You just need to be aware that it's the end of the year. It's pretty normal practice um, that we do that, and um, you, don't, you can take a vote if you'd like. I mean, that's fine, too. Well, I do think we need to publicize it, make sure that people are aware, because I haven't seen anything on any of the net, on the website or, okay. or Facebook Double or check. anything. All right. We'll get it out to people. Thank you. All right. Um, I, was, I was just handed a note is uh, we're having technical difficulties with uh, streaming with the uh, feed. So uh, it looks like we might not be uh, going out live. Is um, 
But as uh, we'll continue on with our meeting, is uh, we have our abatements and supplementals, and we have Paul coming in to join us. You have to do the tip amendment first. Oh, I missed that one. Quick claim leaves. Oh. And yep. Paul, that's Paul too. So, <laughs> all right, is uh, we'll backtrack a little bit. Is uh, is if you want to fill us in on that one, Steve? No, Paul's going to fill you in on that one. Oh, Paul's going to fill us in on the TIF amendment too. Okay. Oh, you know, you muted, Paul. We can't hear you. Better. That's better. Oh, there you are. Right. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Paul. How are you? Not bad. During the uh, annual audit by uh, the by the main revenue services, it was discovered that the original assessed value of the TIF um, that was approved by DECD included the assessed values of some properties that were exempt. So therefore, we that they sh they were assessed as a value. They should have been assessed as zero because they were exempt and they didn't they weren't uh, they shouldn't have been included. So the purpose of the amendment is to correct the original assessed value from 13,203,300 to 10,233,233 um, dollars, which is the taxable assessed value as of the, the date of the TIP was created. So we're looking for your approval, I guess, to signatures to um, change the original assessed value of the TIP. Is there any questions for Paul about this? No. Is uh, so basically, Paul has just said is uh, in the original original assessment we added properties that shouldn't have been added. Correct. Well, they they should have been added, but they should have been added with a zero value because they didn't oh, create any taxable any taxable dollars. Okay. So, um, in the future, those properties have since gone to they were taxable then they went to an exempt status and then they went oh they were exempt they went to taxable and then they went back to an exempt status okay all right if there's no questions of paul can take a motion to accept the amendment as presented moved we have a second second a motion and a second is uh no further questions i'll go through the roll is Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. A four zero. All right. Are we ready for the abatement? I guess so. Is uh, this the, this the third time we've looked at this one? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I think this is the first time. Um, I think the documents that got sent with the with the agenda, yeah, were the one we looked at before because the right, yeah, we lot number the, is different. Yeah, we don't have the correct we don't have the correct information on. Uh, Oops. So we're paper. talking about um, Harvard turf farms. No, that's not what we've had. <laughs> is uh, that's why I asked if it was the third one, third time we looked at it because we we're still on the Boyd property out on Long Swamp Road from the last two meetings, but. Um, oh, no, I don't have that one. I no, no, uh, all right. The one, the one that I was presenting tonight was on um, Harvard Turf Farm property, tax map R13 lot one on Ridland Road. That's on a couple different roads actually, but. So the other one, that's the one that I have on the agenda. Okay. Is um, um, well, is we don't have the paperwork for that one, but you can fill us in. We also have uh, uh, Mr. Donahue. Can Mr. Donahue is uh, wanting to speak on it also? Is um, so, if, Paul, if you want to just give us some background, and then we'll okay. uh, bring Mr. Donahue in. Okay. So the um, the, the property is a uh, it's seven hundred and twenty three point eight seven acres, vacant. Pardon me. Uh, 723 acre parcel, which, which, a result, which is a result of 12 parcels that were merged on April 1st of 2017. Um, of those merged parcels, R13-1 um, 
So only out of the merged parcels, 21.7 acres uh, was not in the uh, farmland program. So therefore, they were not classified as farmland. During the revaluation, um, Yeah, during the revaluation, you know, we had um, made some adjustments to the land on Ridland Road, and we, um, you know, made a couple of changes. The property owners seek an abatement for the difference in the valuation for residential development to farmland and for the neighborhood code that was changed back to slightly below average due to the site being accessed off a portion of Ridland Road that is seasonal and therefore not maintained during the winter months. Um, we searched high and low to find a, an application for that 21.7 acres and were unable to find it. And the property owners were unwilling to supply it that they had done this. Um, so I was never aware that these 27 acres was ever in the farmland program and I don't have any evidence that they ever were. So um, the, as far as the neighborhood codes goes, uh, yes, we did change that, and that, that is an error which we will correct going forward. However, um, the owner has not proven that this assessment is manifestly wrong. Uh, he hasn't given us any indication of what the value of this property is in regards to that. So we're recommending that this abatement be denied. All right. And he has applied uh, for this year to put that property in farm which we will do. All right, is uh, Mr. Donahue is welcome yeah. to our meeting. Is, yes, uh, I am, thank you. Is, uh, if you care to uh, give us uh, your background and uh, explanation about what's going on, we'll do sure. it. Sure, I'm, I'm uh, Vice President of Harvard Turf Farms. We, uh, going back, well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to address the board. Uh, and I'd also like to thank Karen Fortier uh, probably worked with her for four or five hours uh, on this issue. Uh, and uh, so, so based on historic valuations of the property in question, we have been taxed on valuations which have been reduced because of the properties were in the tree growth program. In 2016, we combined 12 lots into one, 723.87 acre lot. That lot is map R13, lot one. I went back to tax year 2017, added up the valuations of all 12 lots. The total acreage was 723.87, which is accurate. And the total valuation was $287,400, which obviously reflected the tree growth valuation. The next year, the acreage did not change, and the valuation actually went down slightly to 280800 The reason for the de decrease was because we had combined all the lots into one big lot, and that reduces the valuation. Somehow, uh, after 25 years of fairly steady evaluations, in one year, from 2019 to 2020, our valuation went from 280800 to 423500 an increase of $142,700, which is over a 50% increase. Now, for 25 years, this property was in the tree program. We've never taken anything out of the tree program. And uh, suddenly, with this new valuation came around, now I suspect that the reason there's no parcels, no individual parcels that add up to the 25 point, uh, Paul said 27 acres, it's 25.4 acres that are currently listed as development land. There are no parcels that any combination of any parcels can possibly add up to 25.4 acres. So I think the, the, the reason for the change, I think was a clerical error. I, I think somebody, between 2018 and this year, somebody um, somebody entered the category code on the on the property card improperly. We we were never notified of it. Nothing ever changed. Nobody ever told us that there was 
there was an increase in the in the tax or the the valuation because some of it was in, uh, was development land. So, um, uh, so the property was first. What I've understood from Karen was that when they started looking into this, they found twenty five point four acres that were listed as undevelopable land. Now, we never classified anything as developable land. When we bought a piece of land, we immediately went down. Usually it was Marsha back in those days, talked to her. She put us, got everything into the program. We did everything we were supposed to do. It's been in the program for 25 years. We've never taken anything out. We don't have any intention of taking anything out. And to be, uh, to be you know, dumped with a 50% increase in our valuation in one year, is, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's just crazy. There's no reason for it. Nobody knows where this land is. It doesn't add up to any parcels. The only possibility, the only possibility is that there was a clerical error and they listed this as undevelopable land. Well, then when the reevalu came along, the reevaluators arbitrarily, arbitrarily put it in as development land without ever consulting us, asking us where the property was. Nobody knows where the property is. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. It never existed as a lot. It's a clerical error and it's somebody's math problem. And uh, there's, uh, and, and nobody knows where the acres are located. There's, there's no, there's no reasonable, there's no other reasonable explanation for this being changed, arbitrarily changed to development land. All right. Um, thank you for that. Um, as, as I said at the beginning of this, uh, the selectmen don't have the paperwork for this. Um, is I'm afraid we're going to have to table this for now is, uh, because until we can have the, the paperwork in front of us to actually see, we can't you know, really make a decision on this. I, I, I can understand that. What I would like you to do at, when you get the information is to go back you know, we started buying land here in the mid to late 80s. Go back for 25 years and find out if there's ever been a piece that was not listed in the uh, tree growth program. And you'll find that there never was. Everything we've had has been tree growth. And the I didn't go back any further than three years ago. But certainly up until, you know, the last three years, the valuations have clearly reflected that all of the land is in tree growth. So I think if you look at the – look, I don't know how far back you, you have records. I've got them going back to when we first started buying land here. But if you look at the valuations through that period, they, they're very steady. And uh, suddenly this year they went up by 50%. 50% the evaluation went up. Where did this land come from? Who, who found it? If you can find where that land is – or if anybody can, Karen probably spent four or five hours with me trying to figure out all, how, how this thing got so out of line. And she didn't say so, but I, I can only see that as being a clerical error, and, uh, and, and I, I don't think we should have to pay for it. Any questions from the board for either Paul or uh, Mr. Donahue? Yes, uh, Paul. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that that he could provide that would clear this up, you know, in an easy manner that we're just missing? Or we um, we have Karen and and I have both looked for the application. Now we found all the applications for his tree growth or farmland properties except this parcel, which is R thirteen dash two. We looked in all the files that we have in the office and we've looked in all the computer documents and searched for it. We have not been able to find that. Unfortunately, it's not recorded at the registry or anything. Uh, we also asked them if they could provide it and they didn't have a copy of it either. So this, we routinely go through and we check the farmland and tree growth files to make sure that we have the updated applications. When, you know, when an ownership changes, um, the new owner has to reapply for that uh, program um, and said I don't know when this was purchased I'd have to go back and look at that individual property but we we could not find any documentation that this particular parcel which which I have is 26.4 acres by the way um, being in a farmland or tree growth program 
but is well, uh, was it being valued in the tree growth program previously? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Paul, Paul, what 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 was the acreage of the parcel? You named a specific parcel. It's the first time I've heard that. With all the work I've done with Karen, nobody ever came up with a specific parcel. What was the exact acreage of the parcel you're talking about? Twenty-six point four. Okay, and what you have changed is twenty. It, the the acreage now that's listed as development land is twenty-five point four acres. So uh, that and twenty-six point four does not twenty-six point four does not match any any parcel that we've ever purchased. It was a portion. So there's something wrong in the math. There's something. Somebody's disconnected somehow. As I said, until, until until we have the paperwork in front of us, you know, is uh, I'm going to move to table this right now because is um, until is just a lot of numbers being thrown around, and it's hard for us to keep track of different lots and uh, valuations and everything. So, uh, all right, I'm not I'm not in any rush. I I would like to. I was very surprised. I happened to send an email to Karen yesterday questioning when they when this topic was going to come up with the select board and it happened to be today this is i found out this yesterday i uh i i'm very very surprised that there's not a requirement for notification on something like this and i mean i understand all the covid stuff and you guys are operating on a wing and a prayer and everything else i understand that but you know i should be notified can i make a request that i be notified prior to the next hearing on this yes. matter that's not Absolutely. a problem. We'll make sure of that is uh, you, you might not have heard what went on last. I week. did. Karen told me that today. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I did. And it, I, I it, mean, it's unfortunate, but the notification should have gone out before last Thursday for a meeting tonight. You know, that's all I'm saying. All right. Um, is um, I'll take a motion to uh, table this for now. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Table for now. Thanks okay. Everybody. And you will notify me of uh, prior yeah, to we'll, the next. We'll get, we'll get notification to you prior to Good. the meeting. It's okay. All right. Meeting. Great. Okay. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Donahue. Okay. Anything else from you, Paul? Uh, no, that's it. I'll get that information together quickly for you so you can have it for the next meeting. Okay. Um, it's We don't typically notify people because it's a public hearing, so that's the right. public notice. Uh, we'll, we'll I can certainly give them a call. Yeah, we'll make sure he gets notice. And, okay. uh, and uh, just to note is our next meeting will, won't be till the end of July because we have canceled the uh, uh, first meeting because it's the uh, date of our, the elections here in town. So. Okay. So I'll, I'll just check with Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Good night. Yeah. Um, How do I turn it off? Yeah. All right. Is uh, that brings us to our uh, second public comment? Is uh, any comment from uh, anybody? No. Is uh, we have we have no other no executive session. Um, anything of, under other business for anybody? Yes. The Spirit of America Award. Oh, yes. Um, I know we were going to do a presentation to the um, people that we uh, dedicated the town report to. A lot of towns do the same thing with the Spirit of America. They use the same person um, or persons. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think that's a great idea. And it's kind of bizarre we can't see, get together and talk about it, but I'd like you to just vote on that. Um, and I, I'll get all the paperwork together, and sometime this summer we'll present it to them. <laughs> right, right. So, is uh, a move accept the nomination. Second. Yeah. Is, uh, we have a motion and a second for the unnamed individuals. Yeah. <laughs> is, uh, Thank you. <laughs> to be announced at a later date, as I'll go through the roll, is uh, Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Good. Thank you. Anything else from anybody? Tom, uh, last meeting we brought up the uh, 
damage to the car from the flagpole. Oh, yeah. I didn't yep. see Thank anything. I, I know you wanted to talk and you wanted to do something with it, Steve, but I didn't see any action that we voted on. I didn't did. know if we needed to vote on it. You do. <laughs> um, I um, told them what we had discussed. Um, they were looking for 1300 um, What is your flavor? I mean, we'll have to take it out of contingency, but um, I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I agree. But that's up to you. <clears throat> um, do we have a motion to uh, pay the young man's damage to his car? So moved. How much? In the amount stated of thirteen hundred dollars. I think that's a fair price for that vehicle. Yeah. So we have a motion for thirteen hundred dollars. We have a second. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Um, I, I will have to say is I I uh, saw the car and um, boy, it did do quite a bit of damage to it. It uh, it, it uh, crushed the roof almost right down the center of it. And uh, we're lucky that nobody got seriously hurt. Um, is the young man involved is a recent graduate. He graduated this year, and uh, he had his birthday the day before graduation. So is, uh, he had quite a June going for him there. But, all right, we have a motion and a second. I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. Thank you. Any further business? We have a motion, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second. Is all those in favor? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank have you. a good night. Good night. Thank you at the end of July.